Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day out there no matter where you are in this world. Before we get started with today's video, I want to thank everybody. We're at 20,300 subscribers. That is just awesome. I never thought my channel would hit 20,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. And in honor of the 20,000 subscribers, I got a big announcement and I'll make that in Friday's video. So be sure to stay tuned. While I'm at it, I want to remind everybody that you can become a member to eBus Central for just 99 cents a month. It's an easy way to support the content you like and also support the channel. Now, the MVP, VIP, and Pro versions are gradually being weeded out. Hopefully, I will have them completely gone by the end of the month. And all those perks will transfer over to the 99 cents a month membership. While I'm talking about that, I want to send a shout out to my newest members, Matthew Williams and Patrick Epps. Thank you guys so much for believing enough in the content and in the channel to want to support it. You guys don't know how much that means to me. Now, if you haven't had a chance to catch my most recent videos, Microsoft's Open Source Theft, Linux Geek's Perfect Distros, and Linux Distros Tracking You, be sure to check those out. And in my previous video, The Future of Linux is Now, covering Nitrix OS, The Future of Linux, Please be sure to check those out. As a matter of fact, today's video is part two of this The Future of Linux is Now, and I got another awesome distribution to talk about, and that would be Vanilla OS. Now, this is the first point release of Vanilla OS. It's 22.10, and it's really an awesome distribution. It's in its infancy, which means it's just now starting to be in our radar of distributions that we need to keep an eye on. This one kind of has some things in common DNA-wise with Nitrix. Nitrix is more or less the root file system is immutable, point blank period. And on vanilla, you've got almost an AB type root system. So they do things just a hair different. But they're going down that same track, which is going to give you sustainability. It's going to give you stability. And it's going to give you the power to have a, a, a bulletproof operating system and have applications that aren't getting installed into the base root directories or interfering with any dependencies in there. Everything's going to be sandboxed away from itself. Now, Vanilla, it's designed to last over time and will always be faithful to you. Now, it is Ubuntu Linux based. It's a distribution that receives updates at the right time, neither before nor after. So it's not going to be a rolling release. And it's built for you to be able to work on, to game on. Uh, it's a complete distribution and it's going to offer you choices. Now, your system and your choices, basically what it is, it, it respects what you want to do and gives you full control over it. At the first start, you can choose which package format you want to use in Vanilla OS. Flat pack, snaps, app images, you choose and Vanilla OS will take care of the rest, putting you in the situation to start you out without any problems. Now, you don't have to worry about Snap. If you don't want to use Snap, you don't have to use it. Flat packs and app images are there. Now, immutable, but also it's not. When we talked about Nitrix the other day, that pretty much made the root system immutable. There was no in and out. It was just solidly locked down, and then you would do your applications outside of it. Vanilla OS is a mutable operating system. Core parts of the system are locked down to prevent unwanted changes and corruption from third-party applications or faulty updates. Some paths are still writable, such as the home and configurations directories. This allows the user to keep their files and ensure the normal functioning of applications. Core components are only updated via controlled and atomic transactions, which are applied only on success and made available on reboot. Now, I had a lot of people come into my comments on the previous video and say, this sounds nice, but what if we need to get in and fix something? What they're telling you here is once the system is locked down and it's updated, you shouldn't have to be in there fixing anything. Uh, Nitrix is a Debian base. This is an Ubuntu base. Nitrix has KDE. This is going to come in GNOME. So you've got a couple different options here if you're looking for something that's solid and stable. Now, if you come over to documentation, frequently asked questions, does it use OS tree? No, it doesn't use OS tree. It achieves its immutability through AB root. Previously achieved through almost, but they're not using that anymore. Uh, core components, APX, ABR root, VSO. Contributing, packaging, apps for vanilla OS require some considerations and guidelines to be followed. But they do have a little bit of documentation over here you can read. Let's back it up a little bit. And then you do have your handbook. Let's open that up. It's got vanilla OS installation, first setup, update, and upgrade. So let's go back to the main screen. Okay, and one more thing I want to point out. Go all the way down to the bottom. Just like with Nitrix that I covered the other day, 
this does have the availability to use DistroBox in it. Now, the only thing that I'm going to point out between Vanilla and Nitrix, like I said, Nitrix is Debian, Vanilla is an Ubuntu base. Nitrix has a few more tutorials on their website that helps walk you through how to get things like DistroBox working. So I hope Vanilla in the future puts those steps on their website so it'll make things a little bit more easier for the community to use and for people that are using the operating system to use. I think that's really important. So without any further ado, let's get on over to the desktop. Okay, we're booting it up right now. There's the vanilla splash screen. Let's let it pop up. I'm opening this up in VirtualBox for some reason. Gnome boxes gave me a little bit of trouble, so we're just going to zip it on over in Virtual. Uh, we're going to try vanilla OS. Let's go ahead and click on that. And we will go ahead and do a search for settings. There's settings. Let's go ahead and get the display fixed so we got the right resolution. Let's come over here. 1920 by 1080. Let's go ahead and apply that keep the changes and we will close and there it is right there if you download vanilla os throw it on a usb open it up in a virtual machine this is what you're going to be looking at now i do want to point out that it is gnome 43 so you're going to have your power button up here settings screenshot you're going to have your output volume right here and then if you click on this little arrow it'll give you all of your selections for output audio so if you've got an internal speaker like on a laptop or if you've got external speakers hooked up that you have running off that laptop you can select whatever you want your output to be right here let's go ahead and click back out of that you've got wired you can set it up for a balanced mode is where it is right now now if you wanted to go to power saver you could, but I'd leave it on balanced. Then you've got dark mode and then nightlight. Now, if you click on dark mode, as you can see, it changes everything a little bit. I kind of like the look in dark mode a little better. I think I'll leave that. So, and then you've got your calendar over here and then your notifications and then today's events. And then if you can click on that to get your activities to drop up or you can hit the super key, which will bring it up right there. Now, what I want to do real quick is I want to go ahead and run a top, see what kind of resources we'll be using. Let's go ahead and maximize that so everybody can see it. And we will go ahead and make that a little bigger. And as you can see, with just the terminal open and resting, you're running about a gig of memory, which is about right for GNOME. I usually have it run anywhere from 850 to 1 gig. And then on KDE, it usually runs somewhere between 750 and 1 gig. It is a little bit heavier than some distros, but it is what it is. Now, another difference. Vanilla OS uses System D and... Nitrix OS uses OpenRC, so that's going to be different. If you're somebody that likes SystemD, Vanilla OS might be it for you. If you're somebody that wants to lean away from SystemD, then you might want to lean more towards the Nitrix. So you've got a little bit of options there. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And yes, we'll close. Go ahead and bring that back up. And then down here, you've got install Vanilla OS. Let's go ahead and open that up and look at the installer. And as you can see, it's a little different you can come over here and click on install and it's going to go search for a language or you can pick it here. And then your keyboard layout, date and time, you can set that up and then select a disk. I'm on a virtual machine right now, so I'm not going to have that option. This is where you would select your disk, then create user, then go ahead and install it to your system. So as you can see, it's got a decent looking little installer. And what I'm going to do right now is just go up here and we're going to quit that. Now, if we come back down, let's go ahead and open up the web. And is this a Firefox? There's a Firefox sync. So this web browser is based on Firefox. I want to see what kind of search engine you're using right now. So I'm going to put in Ebo Central. And it looks as though it is DuckDuckGo. So that right there will be awesome. And I am in a virtual machine, so it's taken a little longer to do that search. But I have noticed in the past, sometimes in GNOME and even with Firefox, in a virtual machine, it, it lags just a little, but no problem. Once you get it installed, you're pretty good. So there's your results from DuckDuckGo. And I do like when they use the GNOME web look with a Firefox base because I like the cleanness of it. I really do. And then if you want to add another tab, you've got your tabs down here instead of up here. Some people don't like this. I do like it, but that's truly up to you and what you like. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then you've got your photos and then files. Of course, you know what files looks like. I like the way it looks. I like the just the blue folders against the dark background. you got your usual suspects over here. you got your home folders right there. Let's close out of that. And then over here, you've got your software. Let's go ahead and open that up. And let's maximize that. Uh, create software. Diagrams. 
Then you've got your work software, learn, develop. Now, I am going to say this. Until you actually get it installed, this will not populate with a bunch of software until this has the opportunity to update. But this is where you would come to look for all your applications and stuff like that once it got installed and updated. And then we can come back down here. you got help. Let's go ahead and open up show all applications. you got your extension managers. Let's see what they got. Out of the box, the extensions they have installed, but not necessarily on during this video or applications menu, auto move windows, launch new instance, native window placement, place a status indicator, removable drive menu, screenshot window sizer, user themes, window list, window navigator, and workspace indicator. So you do have some that are installed, but not necessarily turned on. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then back down here, Gparted terminal system monitor. Uh, vanilla OS first setup. You can open that up if you want to. And I do believe that's just install. I could be wrong, but let's wait and see if that opens up. And this may be an application you have to run after you install it. So let's give it a couple seconds. Yes, and that's exactly what it is because it didn't even bother starting. So I'm not going to worry about that. And then you've got the vanilla OS control center. And right here, you'll have drivers, updates, and subsystems. So if you've got NVIDIA cards in your system, it's going to obviously give you the option here to either install the NVIDIA drivers or what other hardware you might have that needs drivers installed. Then it'll show whatever updates are available. And then, of course, your subsystem. So that's a nice little tool to have right there. And let's come back down here. And then let's open up Utilities. You've got Disks, Image Viewer, Archive Manager. Now, if you're somebody that wants a stable system and you want to have the ability to keep the base part of your system immutable which means you can't mess it up you don't have to worry about other applications getting in there and screwing it up and then you can run all your applications in a sandbox away from your main system vanilla os is definitely something to take a look at and if gnome isn't your cup of tea maybe give nitrix a shot it's got kde a customized version of kde now, I do want to touch on something real quick before I end this video. And please, everybody, please listen. I have went to some message boards and things like that and heard people really bash the videos that I do. And I understand that my videos aren't for everybody. My videos aren't an in-depth look at any specific operating system. My videos give people out there a quick glance at them, a 10-minute look. And if it's something you like or something you think you might like, you can download it and go give it a try yourself. I do 12 in-depth videos a year, which means I do daily driver for a month and then I'll do a base video on that to kind of show you what my experience was like with it. But I have a lot of people in message boards saying my reviews are crap because I don't even test drive these distros for a month and then do a review on them. If I had to test drive every distro I did a review on for a month, I would only get to do 12 videos a year. That's my opinion. Now, Another thing I want to ask, everybody viewing this video right now, this second, if you've got suggestions on things you would like to see me do in my videos, please drop those in the comments below. If you've got complaints about things that I do in my videos, please drop those in the comments below. I love criticism. I Anything to make this channel better, I am willing to listen to. Good, bad, or indifferent, I want that information. The future of Linux is now, whether it be Vanilla OS or Nitrix OS. Are either one of these operating systems something you'd think about using or at least giving a test drive to? Please drop that in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month, but that's not all. We are also on Nutrion, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month, or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.